Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my London and Paris book haul. Yes, I was down and out in London and Paris and I had a fabulous time. I will be posting up my book lover's guide to Paris. I didn't do too many bookstores there um, as I only went to a few English bookshops um, and of course my book lover's guide to London which is obviously a lot more extensive. So let's get started straight into the books. Once again, like my US and Canada book haul, it's not really in any particular order. It's just a giant pile of books that I'm going to go through but I'm going to give you a little bit of background behind each one, why I bought it and where I bought it from. So starting off with obviously my new favourite thing and that is 10 poems about bees. Bees are being my new favourite thing. I got this at the London Review bookshop. Um, it was a really beautiful bookshop, had a cafe nearby it, and then it also had like an old um, pie bull, uh, it had an old like news at the back and that was created into like a cafe area for other restaurants as well. But this is such a cute little, like you get it with a bookmark, it comes all about bees. It was actually a collection of different items that had poems about all these different topics and of course I picked up the one on bees. Next we have a gallery collection and that is 100 Pioneering Women from the National Portrait Gallery. This was such an amazing gallery, of course I flicked to um, Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, um, but I this was such an amazing gallery to go through. The photos, the paintings and the portraits were all fantastic and I particularly loved this one. It was part of the BP Portrait Prize and um, it was called The Poet or the scribe, no the poet, um, and it's such a beautiful painting. So I got that as a postcard and then I got the pioneering women's book because there were so many amazing women throughout British history that were in there and who I'd never heard of before. So I just thought this was such a wonderful little resource for biographies. Next, I went to the second shelf, which is a beautiful little bookshop tucked away down an alley and then into a courtyard. It was simply stunning. Um, and the bookshop itself mainly deals with not new release fiction but vintage books and uh, this one in particular is Rebecca West. Now I've just recently got into Rebecca West's work um, but I wanted to get into more and but so many of the books were expensive first editions. So I got this one which was a non-expensive edition um, probably about from the 50s I believe and it has this really cute little zodiac design on it. But the um, Fountain Overflows, I was reading up reviews and it has got some really interesting reviews. So I can't wait to read it and get my own thoughts on that one. I, when I was in foils, this was an incredibly easy impulse buy because look at it. Just look at it. I've been wanting to get into Nikita Gill's poetry for quite a while. Um, she's got some very interesting collections. But this is Great Goddesses, Life Lessons from Myths and Monsters. And um, this edition signed, so I thought that was such a wonderful way to start my Nikita Gill collection of poetry. Next we have two books that I got from Daunt Books, which is an amazing bookstore because the actual layout of the bookstore is in country order. So they have travel books, books written set in that country, books written by authors in that country. It was just such a fascinating setup for a bookstore. But I got these and this is Elizabeth Taylor's books. Um, she is a English writer from I believe the 1950s, possibly a bit earlier. But Angel is always one that's hugely on my radar and also The Soul of Kindness. I don't think you can get these editions anymore or maybe they're the latest ones from Virago Press. But I um, absolutely love these editions and I want to get more into female writers from the 20th century. This was an absolute no-brainer to buy and this was from the Keats House, Young Romantic, Shelley Byron and Other Tangled Lives. So this is a history on the different romantic poets, um, mainly the younger set, not the older romantic such as Coleridge and Wordsworth. Um, so Keats House, this is obviously he's not the main feature in this book but he is a significant part of the romantic poets of that time. So I really wanted to get something from the Keats house. I do already have Keats poetry. Um, I was thinking of getting his collection of letters, but then I saw this one, which was a really interesting read because I do love reading about the romantic poets and really setting them within their own time period and around other poets at the time and how their poetry came into fruition. It's very fascinating to me. Next was a purchase from the bookshop Gaze the Word, which was 
fabulous because it's so interesting to find a bookshop that's dedicated to a particular topic and this one obviously being around LGBTQ plus book characters, authors, anything like that and it was just so fascinating to see the range of books that are out there and um, so I picked up this one, A Marriage of a Thousand Lies by S.J. Sindhu. Uh, this was a really interesting book for me because it was about a marriage of convenience where both um, the male and the female were both, uh, both parties in the marriage were gay and the wife wants to break away and she wants to live a new reality and explore that, uh, explore the side of her that she's always felt culturally repressed. So I thought this was a very fascinating um, LGBTQ read as most of the ones now I'm reading a YA which is fantastic at the same time but it's more of a younger generation where I want to read more of like how why um, LGBTQ themes are affected within a cultural community. Next was from The Forbidden Planet, which is a bit of a sci-fi fantasy realm, not just bookstores, but merchandise. And I got The Tropic of the Serpents by Marie Brennan. Now, I do have the first one. I haven't read it yet, but this one was signed. Uh, they did actually have the whole range of them signed, but I thought, I've already got the first one. I need to read the second one because the love for the series is like almost like a historical naturalist like a victorian female naturalist who goes out into the world and studies dragons so that sounds fabulous to me um so i really definitely want to read this series but i thought it was a bit of a bonus getting a signed copy we have stephen fry the ode less traveled talking about wanting to get into more poetry i think stephen fry and his approach to making poetry approachable, at least trying to explain the experience and the emotion behind poetry, I think is a good way to really start connecting me with this other form of expression. And um, I think it's really quite fun, especially to have Stephen Fry's voice talking you through poetry. But this was a really great selection from Scoob Book, so it's like the original hard it was like the original hardcover release in the UK um, and so I think this was such a great find. Scuba books mainly do secondhand books and I found so many amazing things in there. Next was a random purchase from Hatchards when I was in there we were waiting to go into the Margaret Atwood release event for the Testaments and of course we were at the Waterstones which is just down the road from the Hatchards. The Hatchards uh, was established in the 1700s and it's the bookstore that the Queen orders her books from. So it's a royal supplier of books to the, um, the palace. But this one is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cicenos. I think I said that right. Um, but not only was the cover incredibly beguiling, but it is translated fiction. I really want to get into more translated fiction, obviously, by women's writers. And it's nice and small. So it'll be a good introduction into her work because I've heard very good things. But... This one I think is her most well known. Going more into signed editions from Forbidden Planet, seriously if you love sci-fi fantasy and you want to try your luck at getting some signed editions, go to Forbidden Planet in London, it is so good. But I got Mary Robinette Cow's The Calculating Stars and um, they did have all her other, like the Glamorous series, like the Regency Magic series, they're signed. But I already have the entire series and I couldn't justify making space in my suitcase for something that I already had at home. So I got the signed copy of Calculating the Stars which is an alternate reality 1950s about all the women who go to the or who calculated for the moon. So I thought it was a really interesting look since I have read um, Hidden Figures and it would be interesting to see how she plays with that historical story. So going into a selection of poetry and I picked a tiny tiny one from Daunt Books called The Republic of Motherhood by Liz Berry. Um, I think it's amazing to get the emotions of like a different um, relationship and so this the starting poem for this was so beautiful and I think it relates to so many people even if you aren't a mother yourself but um, perhaps if you're an auntie or if you have just your own relationship with your mum and it's just this really beautiful connective poetry which which is what I love. It was a short book that I started on the plane back but since I slept so much on my flights back from the UK I didn't get to finish it. Usually I can finish at least one book on a long haul flight because let's face it if I'm going anywhere in the northern hemisphere um, in Australia it's going to be at least 10 plus hours so that's plenty of time to read a book. 
um, and I didn't get to finish A Kestrel for a Knave by Barry Hines. Um, this is a UK classic, a beautiful cover edition. And I also do love birds and we did see some birds of prey in Canada so this kind of reignited my interest in it again. But um, what I did love about this one from what I started before I fell asleep um, was that it's a very raw emotional story about a young boy growing up in a poor English community in the countryside where most of the people are minors and that's all he can look forward to in life. But um, I didn't get up to the part where he meets the bird yet. I, I fell asleep so early, but it's a really interesting look and it's a lot the, a lot of the dialogue is very heavy accented wise, which I always find a little bit daunting at first, but I read it out in my head so I can get the sound and the vowels out. So I thought that was really fascinating too, just infusing so much of this boy's existence into the telling. It's great. An absolute must purchase for me is anything by Dave Goulson. And this is The Garden Jungle, uh, or Gardening to the Save the Planet. So if you didn't see my Canadian and US book haul yet, I did collect a lot of Dave Goulson books when I was over there, especially some fantastic secondhand copies. But this is his latest work. And it's really looking at how you can garden or at least promote uh, more bugs and insects into your garden that will help obviously cultivate the garden but cultivate the wider community and the wider e ecosystem around you. So what I really love is the awareness that he's giving not only to in his biography about how he got into the passion for bugs and bees but then wider afield he keeps going into the history of bugs, the importance of insects within the ecosystem and now it's getting more involved where you can garden and you can be part of this restorative effect to the planet and help the bring back the ecosystem into your local area so I had to get this Dave Goulson book I did buy it from Hatchards as well when I was in there so I did put up before a very short video of me getting the book the testaments um, I did see Margaret Atwood for like uh, 20 seconds <laughs> um, and I did listen to her read the first part of this book thankfully I finished the first one very only a few hours before the um, the event so that was good nice and fresh and it was a really interesting event there were so many interesting things happening and that's where I picked up this book Be the Change by Gina Martin uh, they had a bit of a soapbox uh, session on one of the floors of Waterstones because the entire Waterstones was uh, blocked off for the event and so in the soapbox sessions, because I wasn't fast enough to get in, into any of the ticketed sessions, the soapbox session, listening to Gina Martin talk about not only her legal st uh, struggles and um, advocating for change, um, but also the very intense emotional struggles that she had to go through. So the story behind this is that she had, uh, when she was out clubbing, someone took a photograph up her skirt and she basically reported him to the police and the police said look we have more important things to do and she thought that was atrocious because obviously that is a form of assault and so she advocated because it was actually illegal to do in Scotland and there was a charge behind it but not in the UK yet so she decided that she would advocate for this and she put it out on Facebook and she started to get you know behind the legal frameworks to try and get this into legislation to get this passed into law and um what was really upsetting is she read many messages that she received from young girls at school who it was happening to and of course they were never believed. They were actually told that they had to produce the evidence, not the person that they were um, accusing of the crime. Which is very, very emotional, is uh, very much in the sense of victim blaming and this is just saying for just taking a photograph and this is for like taking a photograph up a skirt, like what is that going to lead to next? So it was an incredible moment to listen to her speak so I, I just had to get her book she signed it for me it was so interesting to talk to her after her, her talk um, so yeah so whilst Margaret Atwood and the Testaments was a very interesting event I think I got something even more fascinating from it so my other purchase from Gay's Word is London Tribbage by Jonathan Kemp. Now this one sounds absolutely fascinating because it kind of tells a story across the decades of um, a gay guest society in London, especially starting from the 1890s. So you're thinking Oscar Wilde, Rent Boys, Aristocrats, things like that. And going into the 1950s where a person who's been around for that time decides to tell his story. And... Um, 
it sounds fantastic. So I wanted to get something, especially because I was in London at the time, I was at Gaze the Word, I wanted to get something that really encapsulated that, um, that London and the gay experience in London throughout history. So this was definitely high on the list for me to get. And it was recommended in store, so another tick in the box. So it was, sounds like a really fascinating read. So I was quite excited to go to Foils after they'd been renovated because I think the last time I was there they were closed for renovations and so I kind of missed seeing them. But um, I was a little bit blown away. I went there as soon as they opened so I felt like I had the entire shop to myself except the cafe. The cafe was packed but the shop itself I had plenty of space to wander and um, I got first the classics of Colette, Colette um, Claudine at school and Claudine in Paris. This is book one and two in the Claudine series. I actually watched the movie Colette uh, starring Kieran Knightley at the British Film Festival in Adelaide and that was absolutely fascinating and I just wanted to get my hands on the vintage editions because I think the illustrations are beautiful but also I think they fit very well into the the character of Colette that was portrayed in the movie and the biographical Colette. So I definitely wanted to get my hands on these and they've been a very tough cookie to find but I finally found them of course at Foils. My next Foils purchases were all exciting options for Victober of which I didn't pick because the, the parcel for these books came a little bit late for my Victober TBR but um, they're definitely for next year. So we had here uh, Charlotte Bronte's Shirley which I've always wanted to read uh, Margaret Oliphant's Hester, which has been recommended by so many people. Um, even the shop clerk says, I'm so glad more people are reading Hester now. Um, Elizabeth Gaskell's Cousin Phyllis and other stories. Such a beautiful, beautiful cover. But I'm very excited to read more Gaskell and having that on the option. And George Gishing's The Odd Women, which is quite a fascinating tale because George Gishing is known for the... Um, is it the Old Grub Street or I think, it's, I think it's Old Grub Street or New Grub Street. I think it's New Grub Street. Um, but this one is about two sisters and it has a very strong feminist prose to it. So I thought that was quite a fascinating option. And the I love the, just love the images they use on the front of these Oxford World Classics. So all potential Victoria reads for next year. Um, but otherwise very excited to find these copies in the UK. So my purchase from the Red Wheelbarrow bookshop, which is in Paris, and it's a, such a beautiful little bookshop, I definitely recommend going, is Kintu by Tara Miyamoto. Uh, once again, I'm adding more Japanese fiction and uh, short fiction to my collection because I find they're very intense storytellers. But this one sounds very nature-centric, and I thought, given how much Hardy I've been reading lately, I have been loving the nature writing in fiction. So this one just seems like a perfect little addition and I definitely recommend going to the Red Wheelbarrow. It is such a beautiful, beautiful store. So the last book on this list, because I cannot find for the life of me the books that I bought at Shakespeare & Co. I must have put them somewhere for a photograph. I might have to do a little uh, Shakespeare & Co. wrap up after the Paris um, Book Lovers Guide. And the book I am going to talk about now is Butterfly Yellow by Tahana Lai. And this is actually a book I got in Singapore Airport. Um, I thought it was really fascinating to get a YA book that was recently published that is set in Southeast Asia. It particularly follows after the Vietnam War. Um, this young girl, her brother, is um, she manages to get him off to America to be adopted and she manages to survive and follow him years and years later. But when she, they do finally meet again, he doesn't know who she is. And there is just that divide of fitting into a new country and a new family, but at the same time recovering from everything that was lost and all the trauma that uh, uh, happened during the war. So I think this is going to be a very interesting and beautiful story if handled well. Um, I'm quite curious to see. So the author herself was born in Vietnam and now lives in New York. So I just thought it was such a perfect read to really understand this experience and this disconnection with a new world. Alright, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and um, I will probably now also film at my Persephone Books haul because I did buy a few from Persephone Books but I did ship them all back. So um, they've finally arrived and I'm going to do that now.
So thank you for watching. I, if you have read any of these books and want to chat about them, please feel free to do so in the comments down below. I will be looking into deciding what books I'm going to start first on my TBR and I'll see you all next time. Bye!